Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the One Paw Wonder. Um, today is our class five of session five, and um, we are doing chicken and dumpling today. And um, so I've done some pre prep to um, kind of make things a little easier for everyone. And um, just before we get started, I'd like to give a great big thank you to all our sponsors and our volunteers. Uh, once again, um, we have a great group that comes back every week to help us and uh, we're, we're very grateful for that help. Um, so we'd like to thank uh, the Lethbridge Foundation for their support, um, as well as the Food Centre here in Pincher Creek, who give us um, donations as they come in and support um, as, as they can as well. So. Um, and then we have, they also, just before I carry on there, is um, the Food Centre also work in support with uh, the Lethbridge Interfaith Food Bank in Lethbridge. So we do tend to get some donations that come in from Lethbridge too, so that's really awesome. And Brockett. Um, so we also have the Brockett um, Food Bank as well, who um, are very supportive and kind of help where they can as well. We keep in touch weekly. Um, to kind of look at what we're doing for recipes and what uh, the food center and the food bank can offer. So, great big thank you to you out there for Pitch Creek and Brockets and Lethbridge. Um, the uh, Pincher Creek community, Creekside, I always get the church wrong. Pincher Help Creek. me out, Kayla. Pincher Creek community. Pincher, ah. No, it's Creekside, Creekside Community. Community Church in Pincher Creek. <laughs> <laughs> they um, continue to offer um, their kitchen and their space so that we can do up the bags each day that we come in on a weekly base. And um, we have County Child and Family Services in the Enhancement Program that um, their staff have been coming out and helping every week faithfully to fill the bags and to help do deliveries so a huge shout out to you guys and um, the Napi Friendship Association is also um, uh, been very generous in helping us as well to keep this program going and Kayla Ray behind the camera um, who is my sidekick and keeps me in line <laughs> And uh, big thank you, Kayla. And um, yeah, so we're gonna get started. And first we're going to um, make sure that you have everything in your bag. So you should have some chicken, which we've cut up, uh, some carrots and some celery, some onions, some garlic. Um, you'll have some oil, some baking powder, thing of flour, and you should have some milk and eggs and your bouillon, chicken bouillon. Um, and there is a few extras in your bag today from uh, the food bank in Brockett. They've given us some buns and some granola bars and just some um, snacks. So uh, yeah, so we're, we're gonna get started and we're gonna meet you at the stove. So I've started to um, put together the vegetables and so there's just carrots and onions and your celery in the pot with about a third of a cup of oil. So you just want enough oil to kind of cover your vegetables and we're just going to add into to some of the garlic. I'm not going to use all of this. Um, so you just your garlic cloves you want to just cut up really really tiny. And so we're just going to let this saute a little bit and um, soften it up and then we'll be right back. So we've sauteed the onions and the celery, carrots and the garlic. And when I say saute, it just is to bring the onions and the vegetables kind of into a trend, a little bit of a transparency color rather than um, You'll, you'll see in your onions, they're kind of, you can almost see through them. And now we're going to add in our chicken. And I've cut the chicken up into cube size because keep in mind that it's a stew or a heavier soup. And so we're going to cook the chicken in with the vegetables and the garlic. 
And um, we're gonna let that cook for about 20 minutes before we start to add the soup base. And so you can just stir that up. And um, that'll build the flavor into each other. And we're gonna continue to just let it cook. And you'll probably want to stir it about, I don't know, every five or six minutes. It's not something that you want to leave the stove too, too long. Um, and just kind of stay on top of it so that it, because you want your, you don't have to worry about your chicken being completely cooked in this 20 minute process. Uh, it will be though, but um, you can add um, your soup base in you know, right after, I'd say 20 minutes for sure, but anyway, we'll be back. So as you can see, this is ready. It um, is fairly cooked. You'll see all of these little white things off of your meat. Do not panic, it just adds flavor. It's from your chicken and it's um, just flaking off of the chicken. So, um, and it will have You'll have some water in there. You want to keep that in there for the flavoring as well. So what I'm going to do is take this completely off of the stove into another pot. And we're going to use this pot to make a roux, which is basically um, flour and um, butter and milk. And then we're going to make that into a paste. And then we're going to add our bouillon uh, liquid into that so for the first step we want to just take this off and put i'm going to take it off and just put it in another pot for right now and what the purpose of this is it's not in your recipe so um the purpose of this is just to help give your soup a little bit of a thickening um so that it's not really 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 soupy and i mean you do want it soupy but just uh a little bit of extra thickener for it. Um, shoot. So I'm going to put about uh, two tablespoons of, like heaping tablespoons of butter, and then we're going to melt that into our pan. And then we're going to add. Um, we're going to add our flour. So it's going to be pasty. Um, you don't want it too, too pasty, but just enough to, to um, thicken it. So I would just put a little bit in at a time and just make sure that it's not all clumpy. Preparation for your um, your broth. Um, some of you may have some canned broth, and you'll also have some cubes of uh, chicken broth base. It's bouillon cubes. So to um, to make your broth, you're going to crumple this up into a hot water, and just so that it dissolves into a cup. And we're going to just take this off the stove for a sec so that we can prepare. And um, we're going to boil some water and we'll be right back. So we're taking the hot water. You don't have to boil it, but just make sure that the water is hot. I have about four cups of water that I'm going to start with. And we'll probably need to add some more water in there, but... Uh, that's okay. And so we're just gonna crumple this up and it's not gonna dissolve completely, but it will once it's into the hot water and to, um, with the chicken and stuff. So don't panic, you can just kind of stir it in, it will dissolve. I prefer to use the liquid bouillon, which is basically the same brand that you're getting in your box. It's a Nor. 
Um, but I do like the liquid better in working with because then it's not so messy to have to crumple it all up. Okay, so I've used um, I've used three bouillon cubes in here, and it just it's like I said, it's not going to dissolve completely in here, but it will um, help the process. So we're going to put this back on the stove. And you can see um, your butter and your flour is, you don't want it to be real, real pasty, like you want it to be a little thicker. Um, but if you make it real pasty, then just add a little more liquid in it because you don't want your soup to, or your stew to end up, you want it more like a gravy versus like being really thick. So we're gonna just put this water and the bouillon in. I think we're gonna have to add some more water in here for sure. Because we're going to put our vegetables back in and our chicken. Now you can adjust your recipe to your family size and I do believe that, that your recipes are for about eight people, but it's good to have some leftovers. And we're gonna let this cook um, on the same temperature, about between medium and high. You can start to turn it down uh, once it starts to boil and just let it cook on medium for a while. And you do wanna definitely um, stir it frequently because of the flour, because the flour will start to help it thicken a little bit. And another little trick, but I did not put in your bags, but to just add some extra flavor, if you're interested, you could add a little bit of poultry seasoning. And that really makes it a really nice flavor. But unfortunately, I didn't have any today and I didn't put any in the bags. But it's still pretty yummy. <laughs> so we're gonna let this cook for a little bit longer and um, then we're gonna get into making our dumplings. Okay, so I have, we're gonna do our dumplings. And this is the part that, um, it's really, really important to not have this like, it's not gonna be like muffin dough or cake dough. It's gonna be stickier. Um, it's not like fry bread. It's, <laughs> it's kind of an in-between. So we're gonna start the process and then I'll show you how it works. So I have two and a half cups of uh, flour, and then I'm going to add um, about four tablespoons of baking powder um, in here. Maybe just a touch more. And, excuse me. And then, um, we're going to just stir that in and we're going to add some salt and salt, um, salt we're going to need, um, I would do about half a teaspoon to start. So we're going to just stir this up to kind of blend in the dry ingredients. And in your recipe, it doesn't call for an egg, but I always add an egg in. Except the last time when I forgot. I thought I was so organized. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to just make a little bit of a well in the flour. And we're adding um, about two and a half cups of milk. Um, now you can add, um, you can use 3%, 2%, homo, uh, you can use cream. Cream's a little bit heavy though. Um, 
I, I don't recommend that, but uh, this is homo milk that we're using today. And I'm just gonna crack an egg in there while we're doing this. And the egg will just help with the fluffiness. And I am going to have to add in some extra milk because this is going to be too thick already. So it's just a matter of um, breaking this down into, you want to really give it a good stir because you don't want it real, real lumpy. So the texture or the consistency is a little bit stickier than um, what you would have. I don't have an egg beater, so I'm just gonna whip it up by hand. <laughs> Debbie, would you mind um, stirring that that um, soup? So as you can see, this is. It, I guess it kind of is like a cake, um, cake texture. So the more you kind of stir it up, it'll just get less lumpy. And this is the beginning of your dumplings. So the key is, is to put it in your soup, which we'll go over and do right now. Um, to put it in your soup with a tablespoon. You don't want them too big and you're just gonna plop them down. I use two spoons to scoop it off. Just plop it down kind of in rows along your soup, which we'll show you shortly. Okay, so we're gonna start to put the dumplings in. So you're gonna wanna put it about that much of a teaspoon. Don't worry about it falling to the bottom. It will pop back up, but you're gonna just put it like this side by side and you don't want to stir it you just want to let it cook you're just going to leave it alone so and you do this at the very end the very end before you're going to eat your soup but you're going to need to let this cook for a good another 15 20 minutes and you'll know because they'll start to really fluff up um, as it cooks and we're going to turn down our temperature just a touch because um, I would put it just before medium heat and then um, you're going to let it cook for quite a while like 15-20 minutes you'll know because it'll start to really fluff up and um, I made way too much dumpling dough, but that's okay. Now, uh, the way to test it to know if it is done is just take your spoon and take one of your dumplings out and then you can cut it in half. If it's really doughy, of course it's not done. And then you can just throw it back in. And how would you freeze this soup? Um, well, your dumplings don't for? well they'll probably freeze okay i've never froze it because everybody eats it so fast how long <laughs> is it good in the fridge for um probably a couple days i wouldn't leave it too much longer than that um just because it you can see how they're starting to starting to puff up already the egg is really important um i mean some people don't the recipe that you have doesn't have the egg in it but add it in anyway um just because it gives gives it a little more fluff and of course the baking powder is the key element to um, the fluffiness as well and what if you can't eat it with the dumplings can you still just make the soup and eat it itself? absolutely yeah if you have gluten issues or um, don't really think you like that kind of thing absolutely yeah you can just make the soup and uh, eliminate the, the flour 
And so we're gonna let this cook. Please don't stir it. It just needs to sit and just keep cooking. And it will kind of just start to fluff up like um, um, little biscuits. Yeah, and covering it is, is key as well if you can. If you can. If you don't have a lid, um, maybe try some tin foil or a plate if you have a round pot. Um, something to cover it so that it gets full heat all over. And we'll be back. We're going to give this some time to simmer and we'll be back to show you the results. So I just wanted to show you so you, you have a good idea of when you're dumplings are done. Um, as I said, you don't stir them. You just plop them in on a teaspoon, tablespoon, and um, don't stir it. Just let it sit. And you can see how it's starting to bubble all around in the side. So you can tell if your, your um, dumpling is done because it comes out like, can you just close right in on that? <laughs> you can see it's kind of a bread um, texture in there you know your dumplings are done then and then you can just take a fork and separate them because they're already plunked in there as teaspoons so you can just separate them a little bit and our creation is complete So we'll um, get this dished up and I hope you enjoy it. And, and just as a side note, um, would love to have your pictures and your comments, um, your, you know, if it worked out for you, if it didn't, um, certainly ask questions because we could certainly help you out and maybe um, try again. Um, sometimes doing dumplings for the first time, it's, it's, gets a little, um, sometimes they just don't turn out the way you want. <laughs> um, but anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Have a good week and uh, we will see you next week. Uh, take care and be safe.